Hello and welcome to the Daily Mill for Sunday the 12th of February 2023. In today's Mill news we have the takeaways from the game from the South London Press. This is at londonnewsonline.co.uk. Mill takeaways from 2-1 win at QPR. Long wait for Loftus Road win ended. What more in Burke deliver first goals as Mitchell celebrates a milestone. Mill were fifth in the championship. After a 2-0 win at QPR yesterday. Here are Richard Cawley's takeaways from the match. Party like it's 1989. That's pretty clever. Pretty clever. The last time that the Lions had won at Loftus Road, it was the year when the Berlin Wall came down. The internet was about to become a thing. And the first episode of The Simpsons aired. What I'm trying to say is it's been a bloody long time. Uh, waiting for three points in that particular neck of the woods in West London. Uh, Millwood failed to win their nine previous away matches against the R's. And it would have been more than a few of the spoils used to pain there. You feared the worst when Chris Martin halved the deficit late on. Yes, it was squeaky bum time, wasn't it? Uh, QPR came into the fixture winless in their last seven games. And from the early stages, it felt like the visitors had every opportunity of increasing the woes on Neil Critchley's side. The Lions away form has picked up since uh, they recorded their first victory on the road. Preston North End on November the 12th, winning three of their last five since. They have already equaled the amount of way wins they managed last season, five, and still have eight fixtures away from SC16 to go in the regulation campaign. Let me just repeat that again because this is absolutely important. One of the reasons we didn't get into the playoffs last season was our waveform was absolutely dog shit. Mill have equaled the amount of way wins that we managed last season. Five. So all we've got to do is get one more win, and it's better than it was last season. So that that objective, which I'm sure I think Gary Rout definitely spoke about uh, previously, and it would have been mentioned in the videos I, I bring to you here, that's been achieved. Okay, we need to improve our waveform. That's been achieved, and look where we are. We're fifth. We're fifth. So problem solution. Fixture solved, fixed it. What more could you want? <laughs> Does his name's What More? You get it? Don't know what more was handed. His first league start for Millwall yesterday. The only change made by manager Gary Rowett. It was an enforced switch with Mason Bennett out with the ankle injury he sustained against Sunderland the previous weekend. The former Middlesbrough and Sunderland attacker was flagged offside for a couple of early four raised forward, but then produced a thumping finish in the 31st minute. Zion Fleming slipped the ball into his path and what might have the time, space and luxury of taking a touch before searing a left foot stride past helpless Rangers keeper Seni Diang. Burke off the bench. Both of Mill's major income in January signings got on the score sheet at the weekend. Oliver Burke had not hit the back of the net since August for Werder Bremen in a Bundesliga fixture against Borussia Dortmund. It was a simple con conversion from close range after QPR's defence made a real hash of clearing once Charlie Cresswell had flicked on Zion Fleming's long throw. Burke's pace and power makes him a really effective substitute to bring on in the closing stages, and he should have had a, decent, uh, should have had a second in the closing stages, managing to stay on his feet as an arse player attempted a foul, only to put his shot wide off the target. Yes, and that, that messed up my, my prediction of 3-1. A uh, wriggle room. Mill will head to Coventry City on Tuesday night before uh, about before about what? Mill will head to Coventry City on Tuesday night before about as tough a pair of back-to-back -back home matches. Oh, I don't think there should be a comma in there somewhere. No, Mill will head to Coventry City on Tuesday night before they play about as tough. A pair of back-to-back -back home matches that you could get. Sheffield United and Burnley. The pair powered well uh, clear at the summit of the championship and look almost assured of Premier League returns. But the Lions have lost just once in their last eight league games, winning four and drawing three. And that gives them a little bit more leeway. Yes, they will absolutely want to get to returns over the next ten days, but it's also not going to be a complete disaster if they don't. Sheffield United and Burnley are powering along, but we all have the fourth best home record in the division. They won't go down not swinging at the very least. Well, 
we still have the best, fourth best at home record in the division, and we've been drawing too many home games recently. Hull, Wigan, um, what was the other one? Sunderland. Well, that was a ref's fault, to be honest with you. Um, so, yeah. But you're looking at it like that. How about we look at it the other way? If we beat Sheffield United, we get three points. We deny them three points. We gain on them by three points. We close the gap on them by three points. Now, are we going to reach Burnley? Probably not, but we want to reach Sheffield United. Because if you get fin, I don't know if you know this, but if you finish second in the league, you get all man you promoted. Wouldn't that be nice? Um, so, yeah. You could look at it one way, you could look at it the other way. There's a picture there that we will put on Twitter after the game. And you can see the squad there. No, it looks like it was taken straight after the game. They gave Billy Mitchell a shirt with 100 on it. So I don't know if they do that for everyone else, because I'm sure there's a few players there who've got 100 games. Um, Leonard Malone, uh, uh, Murray Wallace, Cooper probably. Maybe it's something they do at the training ground like that. Uh, Mitchell Milestone. Billy Mitchell made it 100 appearances for Millwall when he featured at the weekend. The midfielder told our paper recently that he ran around like a headless chicken on his debut, but there's absolutely no doubt that he's matured into a very good championship midfielder. He must be one of the first locked positions on Rowett's team sheet. Mitchell and George Savile are strong pairing in the middle of the park, both of them tending to sit deeper a requirement when playing a 4-2-3-1 formation. The pair were joint first for interceptions, in the QPR game with Mitchell second highest for attempted tackles. And more on that later as we get into the stats. But yeah, defending was done higher up the pitch. Um, so let's move on to this from Southern News. UK. Mill Boss wants more goals from out wide after new signing score against QPR. Uh, Duncan Watmore and Novela Burke scored for the first time since joining the lines at the end of the January transfer window. Um, so let's see what Gary Rout's got to say here. Gary Rowett said it was really satisfying to see his two new signings on the score sheet at QPR, although he wants his wingers to contribute uh, with more goals and assists in the coming weeks. The Lions won 2 1 at Loftus Road. Yeah, we know all about that. Uh, not only was Rowett pleased to see his new arrivals finding the back of the net, but he also highlighted the importance of his wide play scoring and creating goals more often after Mill fails to sign a strike in the January transfer window. It was really satisfying, but if two other players had scored, I don't think I'll be sat here any worse off or feeling any different, he said after the game. We spoke about it before. If you're a wide player and you're in our team, you've got to work your socks off for the team as well as provide attacking moments. This season, I think George Honeyman, clearly after last week, is unlikely to not have scored more goals. voggy has been unfortunate to score more goals. But we've got to step up and score more goals in those areas. It's as simple as that. Whoever plays there, whoever comes in, that's what you need. Uh, we don't need goal. For, we don't need. We need that goal for it. There's going to be times when G and Duncan might start the game. Uh, there might be times when Berkey and Voggy start the game. Uh, there might be times when Berkey stops up, starts up front, or but Voggy starts up front. Either way, people have to step up and add that little bit of attacking threat. But today, we get those two players to score the goals. We spoke about doing it in different different ways because we didn't get a striker in, but I think you can see the versatility that we have today with those players in the squad. That's Gary Rout there. Now, why is he saying that? I think he's saying that to take the pressure off Bradshaw. Because Bradshaw, again, he missed a bit of a decent chance earlier on. Um, he's, he's not going to be um, hardly amazing. Um, and he's just going to run around a bit. So, you need the goals to come from elsewhere. I think he realises that if we're relying on Bradshaw, yes, you can't really do that if you want to succeed. So we'll wait and see. Um, but hopefully now we can get goals from uh, the whole front line. Now, this is from millwc.co.uk, the Luton tickets. The rearranged game against Luton, which is now going ahead um, on the 28th of February. Uh, I believe it's the last day of February this year. Yeah, it's not leap year this year. Uh, so this game is on Sky, but if you want to go to the game, it's for some reason, because it's, it's on Sky, it's kicking off at 8pm. 8 8pm. 8 
Uh, Mill travel to Luton in the Skybet Championship on Tuesday, the 28th of February, kick off 8 pm. And tickets go on sale to season ticket holders with 650 or more loyal points from 9 30 am on Monday, the 13th of February, so tomorrow. Uh, any tickets will go on uh, after that, they go on Tuesday to season ticket holders who have 610 points or more. And on Wednesday, it goes to season ticket holders with 570 or more. On Thursday, it goes to season ticket holders with 560 or less. So all remaining season ticket holders on Thursday. And then on Friday, so if you're a season ticket holder, you've got from Monday to Thursday to get a ticket to Luton away. If you are a member, for you, it comes in on Friday the 17th. Uh, to members who have 210 or more points. And on Saturday, the 18th, the day of the Sheffield United game, which kicks off early. So if you maybe want to get a ticket before or after the game, uh, all remaining members can buy a Luton ticket from Saturday, the 18th of February. The tickets are priced at £27 and then various concessions all the way down to uh, £10, £7, under 10 So there you go. Uh, reminder as well, the commentary game is on Sky. It's on Sky Sports Arena, I believe. So um, if you've already got the Sky system and you pay for it, uh, be aware that it's on Sky Sports Arena, and you could um, you could watch that uh, watch the commentary game on Tuesday. Uh, we have to wait and see if it's going to be on on Lions TV. Uh, it will if you're abroad, certainly. But for UK um, Mill fans, uh, we have to wait and see. It is a midweek game, so that is a possibility, and it was originally a midweek game, um, not a rearranged one. Now, moving on to the stats part of Stats Sunday video. Here we go. Why am I showing you this? Uh, this is from Experimental 361. Um, Gizu does these. He's been a bit on and off recently. I don't know if he was on holiday or what, what was that in there. But he's finally put up a double dose uh, today. He's got the, the one from the Sunderland game and he's got the one from the QPR game. So we're going to have a look at last week's one against Sunderland. As you can see, far the better team with uh, the better chances. 1.2 XG, 0.5 XG. Um, pretty even uh, going into half time. More, not that far away, but you can see Sunderland. Had a massive amount of time when he didn't really have a shot on goal from the 15 minute all the way to about the 73rd minute. And they only kind of kicked in gear once they were behind and they were, were losing. So it looked like they were coming for to nick a draw, possibly. Um, and our goal kind of upset that. You can see we come out in the second half and, and we start kicking into a second gear and then we end up getting a goal. Now, having a look at the one from yesterday's game, the QPR game, you can see both teams up to about the 30th minute, keeping a bit, not really getting a, a shot on target, not getting, because the XG doesn't go up. Um, the XG overall was 0.6 for QPR and 1.3 for Millwall, so we overperformed our XG. <laughs> Which is good, but again here similar. We keep it a bit quiet. Both teams keep it a bit quiet in the first half. They, after we score, they suddenly start going at it. We're trying to go into half. I don't know the manager if it's a bit of a a moany gear, but they probably wanted to equalise with our time. I'm guessing. I don't know. But second half. Now this is interesting because normally. It's the other way around that we will come out the second half and start slowly. We come out the second half and we are off. We're like a greyhound chasing chasing a rabbit. We're, we're up there. The staircase is going up, 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 up. From the start of the second half all the way up to the 60th minute. And we keep them quiet as well. We score. As soon as we score, see, then they score. They bring on, they make changes. They start putting it long. And they get the goal and it's squeaky bum time for Mill. We uh, kind of s start defending after our goal, second goal, with the flat line, the black flat line, and then we have the chance at the end. And Oliver Burke, coming off the bench, has the highest XG 
of any play. He obviously had that chance that he didn't score, and he had the chance he did score, and that gives him an XG of 0 0.5. So he got one goal from enough chances to give him half of a goal, which is absolutely brilliant. But you can see here, not Bradshaw, 0 0.3. So you've got the two players who didn't play the like Bradshaw. Didn't play them for four ninety minutes, did he? He did come off, but you can see with Sid Watmore got the same XG as Bradshaw, and you've got Oliver Burke higher XG than Bradshaw, which uh, tells a story of its own. Now, at this point in the video, we would normally go to infogold.net, but I think they've had some kind of update or something because it's not working. You can see the XG in the middle isn't there, and the shot map is missing a whole load of shots. It's, I don't know, they've screwed up a, a thing or something not working. I don't know what's going on. But uh, there we go. So we're going to skip that and go straight to whoscored.com. And you can see, if you look on the right hand side, the top performers, um, top four, all my all players, Chris Will, Watmore, Burke, Lemmy. Um, the shots, you've got Ilias Chair, which thank, thank God it was him because he was just shooting. Here, there, and everywhere, and they were going high and wide. Um, so yeah, if we look in the middle. Go back to the middle. You see, Millwall got the the higher, the, the bigger list. Millwall created a high number of uh, chances relative to their possession, stole the ball often from the opposition, were effective at creating goal scoring opportunities from counter attacks, effective at creating goal scoring opportunities from set pieces, strong at finishing. Our weaknesses were well, we lost possession often. We gave away a lot of free kicks around the box and were caught offside often. Okay. Uh, so the attempts on goal. Uh, it was QPR 9, Millwall 11. 6 to 5 open play, 3 to 5 set piece, and we had one counter attack. So that gives us two goals from 11 shots. It's an 18% conversion rate, which is better than theirs. Uh, here's where we went, mostly down the left hand side. Uh, both teams going down down the wings. Uh, shot direction uh, as normal. Shot zones. Yeah, we don't. We're not, no shooting outside the box for Mill Wall. Get get inside that box and then have a shot. But you can see nearly half of QPR's shots were from outside the box. That's probably why they didn't score. Action zones. That's not normal. That the away third. Is that quiet? That's not normal. Uh, player positions. That's kind of weird. That is kind of weird. Um, it looks like what QPR are playing like a three-five-two. Mere walls is just very avant-garde. Very avant-garde. So it looks like we got is that Cooper dropping back, playing the sweeper, and. Daniel McNamara kind of being pinned back. Murray Wallace being pinned back, not really going that far forward. But you've got um, Watmore getting in it with uh, Zion Fleming and Bradshaw basically playing on top of each other. Interesting. Interesting. Okay. Um, so let's get into the uh, nub of it. Here's the match events. Goal 131, assist from Zion Fleming. Zion Fleming's first assist of the season. Hopefully there's many more to come, like I said in yesterday's video. Uh, he hasn't scored for a while, he's still on 10 goals. But hey, if he can get 10 assists from, from now until the end of the season, happy days, because that's going to be goals for Millwall. And that's good for the team, it's good for the league place, it's good for trying to get uh, promotion via the playoffs or automatic. So yes please, goals and assists or assists whatever it doesn't really matter um so we've got the raft of substitutions we've got the one sub mill wall and then we've got the goal from uh well, they had a bit of a uh, bad luck they brought in a sub and he had to go off injured well what was that about was he not ready to come back were well, they rushing him back is he quite a good player chris Phillip? um well they rushing him back do you not warm up properly are they that they're probably that desperate, the manager's that desperate to get a result, like trying to rush him back. They kind of backfired on him. Five minutes later, he's back off the pitch. And then we score straight after uh, that happens. Um, Honeyman gets booked. And then later, we got the late subs at the end. Uh, Mill trying to hold on. And hold on, they do. 
So let's have a look and see who did what in the game. So here we go. If you look at the top left and top right, you see the club badges. You see the average player rating with 6.47 PPR, 6.78 for Millwall, which is a difference, a bit of a difference. Not totally um, blown away, but we were the better team. Um, man of the match, as I said, given to Cresswell uh, with 7.6. We've got George Long again with a low score, 6 0. Um, I'm guessing that's because QPR didn't have many shots on target and they actually scored one goal. You can check on that uh, in the next page that I bring up. Um, in terms of other players, we've got who have we got? We've got Fleming, Mitchell, Savile, Watmore on sevens. And you've got Burke on sevens and then everyone on Boggle Sam, 5.9, which even it came on really late. Too. Um, but yeah, other than that, everyone's all right. So who, the shots nine to eleven. Who had them? So like I said, Elias Chair just shooting high and wide all the time. Um, because he didn't really. If he had a target, man, if they were playing Martin from the start, he might have put a few more crosses into Martin, and it might have been a different story uh, instead of just shooting. So you've got Bradshaw with three. Like I said, I just showed you the XG of the players: Bradshaw, Watmore, and Burke. So you've got Bradshaw with Three shots, what more with two, and Burke with three, and Cresswell with three. Other than that, that was it. So before Burke came on, Bradshaw had the same amount of chances as him. Didn't put him away though. Well, they even on target. We'll look at that in a minute. Possession wise, as we know, we don't like possession. Get the ball up there. Don't worry about keeping it. Why keep it? What do you want to keep the ball for? Just get it up there and get it in their goal. Or try to. Um, so 65 to 34. Um, which probably could have contributed to Bradshaw's low score. But if he's doing a lot of running around between Dunn and Dicky as they try and pass it between themselves. Uh, obviously when he, he's going to be out of breath. So when he does get that chance, ball to him. He might be a bit um a bit winded and not be able to take it properly. So maybe that's what's going on, I don't know. Um pass success percentage seventy five to fifty two. That's quite low to mill for mill wall. Um probably the smaller pitch or I don't know. Um but yeah, that's not too good. Um so pro probably the long balls we've got Chris or Matamara down and that's really low, 28-33. Um, and Murray Wallace as well, 49. Uh, and Long, 14. That's not good at all for him. He's normally at least in the high 20s. So I'm guessing Bradshaw didn't win too many headers. We'll find out uh, later. Uh, dribbles, 2-5. to five. Um, Burke with the most for Millwall. Again, you think a player would low, like low would have be able to have a couple of dribbles, but no. Uh, aerials won 34 to 38. So here's where we go. While the while the passing accuracy was down, you got Dicky with 11 aerials one, Dunn with 11 aerials one, and even though Bradshaw and Fleming got five and four, that's what 22 to 10. So that's why you got Chris Hall and McNamara pumping balls long, and they're being won by the QPR central defenders. That's the reason why the pass uh, success percentage was way down. It's normally around 78 or so, down to 52. But we still won the game, so who cares, huh? So everybody won an aerial of the starting 11, except for Long and Honey Man. And even Burke won two when he came on. Uh, tackles won, 16 to 21. Everyone won a tackle for Millwall except for Long, Fleming, Bradshaw, Watt. Interesting. So Shackleton, when he got on, he, he wasn't that long on the pitch, got one tackle. Good, 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 good. But you've got Honeyman and Mitchell with the most, and Savile with the most tackles. But the, the tackling has been done in the middle of the pitch, higher up, uh, not in defence. So that's, that's very helpful as well, isn't it? Uh, probably, like I said, again, because of the smaller love to spread pitch, maybe that's. What that was about. Um, corners four to three. 
dispossessed 12 to 10 so basically having the ball taken off of you and that's a lot for QPR isn't it basically everyone um, crazy so let's have a look and see about some of what I've just said we're going to have a look at that so how many shots did QPR have on target so they had nine they had two shots on target again 50% of the shots on target went in now this time it was a bit better because uh, Long actually got his hands on the ball. He was on the goal line. He got his hands on the ball. Didn't get his hands on the geezer's face. I think if he would have punched Chris Martin in the face and knocked him out, probably could have been a penalty. Maybe got sent off. Um, because if that happened in the last game, the referees probably gonna look at that and say, "Well, if you've done it two games in a row, it's probably not accidental." So, but he stayed on his line. He got his hands to it, but it's still winning. So that's why George Long got a low score. Because there were two shots on target and one of them went in, which isn't fifty percent save rate is not good, is it? Um, so let's go down and look at the ratings for the Mill players. Uh, we have seven point six four for Cresswell, what then what more, and then Oliver Burke, then Zion Fleming, Billy Mitchell, and then George Savile. You see, you've got six players, in there, seven or more. Um. Then it goes down a bit. You got Ryan, so Ryan Leonard six point two eight. So yeah, look, you've got you've got Ryan Leonard who came on in the ninety first minute, and basically played injuries, got a higher score. I don't know how off of two touches, for two touches, and he got one key pass, and that gave him a higher score than George Long, who's had what is it? he got passing accuracy of thirteen point six and twenty seven touches. That's not good. The only one. But then you've got Vogel Sam who came on, didn't get as high a higher score as George Long will go above him. Got 5.87, four touches in what would have been like 10 minutes or so. So, there you go. Um, so, interestingly, so you've got Oliver Burke come on, he came on 67 minutes replacing Duncan Watmore. Uh, got three shots, got two shots on target. Uh, had 14 touches. So he's had, what well, is he had? He's had 30 minutes on the pitch. He's had a third of the time that Duncan Watmore's had on the pitch. And he's just underneath Duncan Watmore. So Dun Watmore 7.32. Oliver Burke on 7.30. Not bad. Not bad. Um. So me all shots, how many did we actually have on target? So like I said, we only had four players who had shots. So everyone else was like on defensive duty. Maybe was Charlie Cressel being used instead of Jake Cooper's Cooper a decoy? Were they using Charlie Cressel as, as an alternative? Because they knew that they Jake Cooper was going to be targeted. If if so, that's very uh, interesting and probably pretty clever thing to do. Um, again, so we've quite a few shots on target actually, except for Bradshaw. Look, Bradshaw, three shots, zero on target. And that's why you've got probably, there are set why you've got Gary Rowett in the story that we just said saying we need to get goals from somewhere else. And he's saying, well, he's basically saying, look, uh, we can't rely on Bradshaw because he's going to score a hat trick against Rotherham. And he's not going to score against QPR. He's might give him three chances. Um, but fair play to him. Look, he runs around a lot. And that's the kind of criticism that was thrown at Lee Gregory. It's like, what would you rather have? Like, the worst one is players who aren't very good and don't run around a lot, especially strikers, like tall ones who just stand up there and don't really bother. You can see if you watch the game and you watch them instead of watching where the ball is, you see they don't really move a lot. But to have a player who's doing a lot of running, doing a lot of chasing down, and doing a lot of closing down, all that stuff, tackling and stuff, yeah, why not? Why not? But it does mean we need to get goals from somewhere else. So, so in terms of, so we had four players having shots, and so only three of them had shots on target. So we had, what was it, 11? 11 shots and 5 on target, that is, that's pretty good, 
half of the shots are on target. Fantastic. Pretty, pretty good. So, offsides. Apparently, we were offside a lot. Three times, I suppose. Um, to unscheduled touches, which is poor ball control. Uh, defensively, tackles. Savile, Mitchell, Honeyman, and then goes down to Murray Wallace. So you put, like I said before, fire up the pitch to tackling zone. Interceptions, Savile, Mitchell, and then McNamara, all joint. So, there you go. Clearances, Breswell, Billy Mitchell. He's listed there as a DMC. So we playing DMC in this game. Uh, Jake Cooper, Mario Wallace, George Long, Ryan Leonard. Lock shots, probably none because they only had two shots on target. So there you go. Um, passing wise. So who had the most passes? Mary Wallace, Billy Mitchell. Like I said, passing accuracy was way down for us. Uh, Billy Mitchell was normally the, the leader in this for us. Um, instead, we've got three players joint. Weirdly, 19 passes for Cooper, Honeyman, Fleming. They're all on the same accuracy. It's kind of weird. Um, but yeah, you've got Billy Mitchell with 34, 64.7. So he's normally up in the 80s. So that's kind of weird. Um, crosses and accurate crosses. Honeyman 5 and 3 here. Yeah, Honeyman was very good yesterday. He was very good against Sunderland as well. Like I said, these players coming in, I think some of the players uh, they've had a rock out on the backside. Okay. Um, need to perform here because it's, it's okay being first choice or your second choice. But you start being third or fourth choice, and you you you, you start getting in the realms of am I even going to be on the bench this weekend? Am I going to be sitting at home playing with my kids while while the football team that I'm playing for is involved in the game? You know what I mean? That kind of thing. Um, Jules Savile one on one. Uh, long balls and accurate long balls. This is where it fell apart. Uh, because of uh, the QPR defenders. George Long 21 and 2. Ouch, that's bad. That's quite bad. Uh, Mario Wallace 11 and 3. McNamara 9 and 1. Gressel 9 and 2. We've got Billy Mitchell 5 and 3. Um, but yeah, there you go. That's it for the stats for the QPR away win. First one since 1989. Fantastic stuff. And on that note, thank you for watching and goodbye.